welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford, so grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business. I hope you are somewhere warm on this frigid day, enjoying what makes you flow. As you move through life, are you just existing, or are you living your life the way God intended? Coming to the mic is Minister Jaleesa Hardy, who is a heavily involved minister at First Baptist Church of Guilford in Columbia, Maryland. Minister Jaleesa Hardy is a wife, author, speaker, and spiritual transformation life coach walking alongside women on their journey to freedom and living abundantly. Minister Jaleesa Hardy published her first book, a memoir entitled It's All in Me, My Journey to Freedom and Living Abundantly. Well, welcome, welcome, Minister Jaleesa, to the mic today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, we're excited to have you. Uh, so tell us, what it, what it's all in me. How did you come up with that title? So I'm a member of a sorority, and... In sororities, it's customary to give you a, basically like a sorority name. So the name that I was given was um, Deaf Sister Unabridged. And my dean gave me that name, and she told me to remember these four words. And the four words she gave me was, it's all in me. Because the word uh, in and of itself, unabridged, means that it's all inclusive. So she wanted to remind me by giving me that name that I have everything that I need within me. I don't have to go to someone else or out to something else in order to accomplish things. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given me. I literally have everything I need in order to succeed and do the things that God has called me to do. So in giving me that name, um, I chose these four words, it's all in me, as the main title of the book. And the subtitle, My Journey to Freedom and Living Abundantly, I I, uh, added that part because I'm telling my story, Um, my journey to freedom and living abundantly. So that was the reason for the title of the book. Okay, so can we get a little bit of a snippet of what your journey has been like? Just like I would say majority of us can say that we've had ups and downs in our lives. Um, for me, from a very young age, the I would say the trauma started for me. Um, I was sexually abused from a very young age by a sibling of mine. And... Um, Not only that, growing up, I became very promiscuous. I became very angry. I was exposed to pornography at a very young age. I abused drugs. I abused alcohol. It was a lot of different things that um, being exposed to sexual abuse at a very young age caused me to do growing up. And people didn't understand or people didn't know what was going on. They would just label me, oh, she's fast oh, she's just angry, oh, she's just X, Y, Z, but nobody ever stops to ask, okay, what's wrong? Why are you acting out? You know, what happened? And for me, it caused a lot of, I would say, strife in my relationship with my parents. And even in relationships with men, I literally would just act out or I would, I eventually became the abuser. Um 
And that, like I said, it caused strain on my relationship. It caused strain in in school. Wherever I was, I was either fighting or I was angry or it was just a lot of different things that I was lashing out and trying to show people that I was hurt in a way that I felt like people should know what was going on, but nobody could see it. It Mm -hmm. took me really going to God to say, God, like, I don't know how to handle this. I need you to show me what it is that I need to do. I grew up in church all my life. My mom's a minister and my dad's a reverend. So I grew up in church all my life. I had a knowledge of God, but I didn't have a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. So it took me stepping out and saying, okay, God, even though I was angry with God for him allowing all of the <laughs> things to happen to me that happened, I still knew that there was no other way for me to get through what I was going through. So in seeking God, I was able to turn my life around and really be able to open up and tell somebody my story. Um, My now husband was actually the first person that ever told my story to in its entirety. Um, And from there, I was able to open up and be vulnerable with other people in order to start going to therapy, in order to really open up about my relationship, open up in my relationship with God to heal and really start my journey to freedom and living abundantly. Wow. Mm-hmm. And your story is probably a lot of women out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've met so many women that has gone through similar of what you have uh, gone through. Some have pushed through and some have not. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate you you know, that's being very brave to be able to tell your story, you know, and and be able to be the light for somebody else. So we thank you for that. You're okay, yeah, very welcome. Just, it's really important, as I said, that you're able to tell this story because it gives other women the courage to begin to tell their story. Mm-hmm. One of the things that many women do with that type of background or this type of background, I'm not going to say that, this type of background, is that in order to survive, they will we will go into denial mm-hmm. because we feel that there's so much shame and so much guilt because a lot of times we guilt ourselves even when it was not our fault. Yep. So it really is an act of courage on your part to be able to tell your story to a listening audience and uh, be visible. So I really commend you for being visible. Yeah, right. Well, what have been some? What have been some of the um, reactions that people have had to your story? <laughs> when I started telling my story, I've always been, you know, open and very honest about, you know, my story after I was able to open up about it. I was Mm -hmm. always going around and telling my story and sharing it with people, whether it was with a group of people or individuals. And every single time I share my story, literally every single time, I get someone to tell me something that they've never told anyone else Mm -hmm. before, whether it was that they were raped, whether it's that they were sexually abused, molested, dealt with incest in their families, like I've had those people come to me, men, women, all types of people from all different types of backgrounds come to me and tell me, you know, I've never told anybody X, Y, Z. Thank you so much for being so open and honest about your story. And for me, every time I tell my story, I know that somebody is going to uh, benefit from it. Somebody is going to be helped and somebody is going to be able to continue their journey to healing because I've been open about my story. Not only for me, but and them, but future generations. Because for me, I've seen it understood that when it comes to sex, sexual abuse and incest, especially in I would say the black community, mm-hmm. it's something that we say, you know, what happens in the house stays in the house. So a lot of people are suffering in silence because yes. they have this thought process or this mentality that has to stay in the house. I can't go out and tell anybody what happened in the house. You know, so by that's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
So by me being willing to open up and talk about it, I help people to break those chains and break those generational curses because it's it's, it's so so much people feel like it's so much easier to just hide it or suppress it mm-hmm. or to just m- make it seem like it's going to go away by not talking about it. Yeah. You know, that's uh, so true. Glad you brought that up. And when you were saying that, what came to my mind, uh, which was one of the first, sort of like when the the shell cracked, was the book and then the movie, The Color Purple. Mm-hmm. And many, I remember the reactions to many people. And even now, I know people... Women who are like, oh, I, I can't watch The Color Purple. I just, I can't. I don't want anything to do with it. And when I start talking to them, it's because they have the same history. But it's mm-hmm. so painful. And, like, women will harbor the guilt. Men, too, who have been raped, um, sexually abused, they harbor the guilt. So. Mm-hmm. I I just vividly remember the color purple and the physical, the little physical reaction that so many women, so many black women had. Uh, It was amazing. It was almost cathartic uh, because for the first time in their life, they were like, somebody else went through this? And then they started talking like to their mothers or uh, aunts. They found out that this has been going on. It was nothing new. You know, this wasn't something that was, the color purple was not something that was a fiction. It was Mm -hmm. the truth that had been in denial for centuries. So Mm -hmm. could you talk about, as these people open up to you, could you talk about a little bit about the guilt and shame that they may express? if that's possible. And I'm saying this for our listening audience because right now someone is listening and saying, yeah, that's me. And, oh, my goodness, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear this. They're ready to run. And the reason that they're running is because of the guilt and the shame. So if you could talk a little bit about that in your experience working with people. Yes, ma'am. So... When it comes to being sexually abused or being raped, a lot of times people feel like, oh, if I would have not been in the wrong place at the wrong time or had I said something to someone or if, you know, I didn't do X, Y, Z or if I didn't drink or if I didn't dress a certain way, this wouldn't have happened. And they carry this guilt. And one of the things that I realized for myself is that because we want to, I feel like we want it to go away. So it's easier for us to deal with our part in it or feel like we have a part in the situation. Mm -hmm. So we can say, okay, I did this so I can deal with this on my own. I, it's my fault. You know, I don't want to blame this other person because, a lot of times that person is no longer around, so they can mm-hmm. never, you know, get forgiveness or, you know, seek out, you know, what it is that they're looking for from that person. So it's easier for people to carry that guilt instead of, you know, letting it go or, you know, really allowing the other person to take responsibility for what they did or didn't do. But for me, I realized that even in that, seeing for my own personal story, the person that was that sexually abused me was sexually abused. Yeah. So, yeah. like I said, it was a generational thing mm-hmm. because not only had my sibling been sexually abused, one of the things that I learned after opening up about my story, my mom had never. My mom is a very open and honest person. She talked to us about uh, sex. She talked to us about masturbation. She talked to us about drugs and alcohol. She talked to us about everything from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she told us after I opened up about what happened to me, she said, I never told anyone that I was sexually abused as a child. 
Mm-hmm. And she was, I think, 40, 40 something by this time. So she had been carrying this around for 30-something years. And a lot of times we don't understand Mm. that when somebody is abusive in that way, nine times out of ten they've seen something or something has been done to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the truth. And then it becomes multi-generational. It just gets handed down because everybody's hiding it. And nobody's mm-hmm. talking about it. That way you can't protect anyone. You can't protect your child. Yeah. Because you're hiding your own guilt and shame. It's very powerful. Yes. Um, how did you begin to move through this? What are some of the things um, that you started to do to get your freedom from this uh, this sort of deal? So I talk a lot about it in my book. Um, I give five S that I use in order to get to the point of freedom and living abundantly. And the first F I talk about, F as in Frank, um, the first F I talk about is my faith. If it mm-hmm. wasn't for my relationship with God, I would not have been able to make it through everything that I had gone through. Every other thing that I had tried to use to fix it or to to heal it or deal with it or even just suppress it, nothing else worked. Until I turned it over to God, I I wouldn't have been able to move past it. A lot of people say, I don't understand how you're, you're still sane, how you're still, like, mentally stable. And you've been through everything that you've been through. And I'm like, it's nothing but God. It was mm-hmm. nothing but my relationship with God and his love for me that kept me sane. The second mm-hmm. F I talk about is family and friends, having a support system, having people that I can talk to, having having a therapist, having a life coach. Those types of things helped me to get through it because had I continued to keep it to myself, I probably would have lost my mind. Mm-hmm. And the another thing was forgiveness. Uh-huh. I had Good to one. literally forgive God because, as I said, I was angry with God that he could say that he loves me. He could say that he cares about me. He could say that I'm his child, but allow these things to happen to me. I blamed God. But it wasn't mm-hmm. that he he didn't love me. It wasn't that he loved me any less because these things happened to me. What I had to come to terms with was that we live in a simple world. And because of that, things happen. The Bible says that it rains on the the just and the unjust. So things are going to happen whether you feel like you're walking the way that you're supposed to be walking or not. Because sin is in this world and people do things. People have free will. So things are going to happen that we don't like. But what I realized by looking back at my story was God worked all of those things out for my good, even to this very day, being able to talk about my story in order to help someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, you know, being able to put what happened to you in words so that people can read it, Mm -hmm. you know, That is huge in itself. You know, talking about it is carriage, but actually putting it in words so that people can read the details of it, that is uh, amazingly courageous. For sure. Thank you so much. And I also think now uh, people are realizing that their story is important to someone else. And mm-hmm. many people are, you know, really using the things that have happened to them in their life to be able to help other people. You know, the the Me Too movement is a prime example of people stepping out, telling their story that they have been holding on to for decades. Mm-hmm. And, and, and getting it. 
And I think, um, Lisa, in that moment when you decide to let go, it's just it's it's just a total relief. Just just even going at that stage where you are, I'm gonna let this go. Just saying those yeah. words before you have even went through any of the action steps to do that, it's a relief in itself. Mhm. Yep. It's like the weight of the world is lifted off of your shoulders. Because you carry this as like a spiritual weight, but you feel it physically. You feel mm-hmm. it and different things start to happen, whether it's migraines or whether it's, it, it manifests in a physical way. That those spiritual things that we carry, those spiritual mental things that we carry for so long, it, it starts to manifest physically. And we mm-hmm. still continue to suppress it. Like maybe it's, you know, something else, but really a lot of our ailments, are because we're suppressing things or not dealing with things that are mental and spiritual going on in our lives. Exactly. And that's very true mm-hmm. of any form of addiction. Um, mm-hmm. Food addiction is a really good example. I mean, all oh, the others God. do the same thing, but food addiction is literally uh, letting the, as my mother used to put it, let the food stop your mouth. Mm-hmm. And it's a way of expressing you keep putting food in your mouth so that you don't allow yourself to say what it is that's really there. Let something come up. Like um, sometimes people have memories, um, flashbacks, uh, and mm-hmm. they don't even understand. They, it may come to them in a dream or it may be something, uh, a smell, an aroma. Uh, it may be a time of the year and all of a sudden they find themselves binging insanely and they know that their activity is insane, but Mm -hmm. it's their way not vocalizing what it is that needs to be said. And that's what I appreciate you talking about, the fact that you have to make those steps to get to the point where you're willing to put the addiction down. Mm -hmm. Sex addiction, food addiction, alcohol, drugs, spending, whatever it is, so that you can finally open your mouth and say what it is that's been rolling around and hidden inside of you for so long and hurting for so long. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the major things that people don't recognize is, uh, yeah, I can speak to this, that when I had my first awareness that something was going on in my life, there had been an ache, a pain that I could not give voice to. Mm-hmm. And I was put in a position where I finally could give voice to it because other people were giving voice to it. And I just yeah. cried bucket. And all of a sudden, that pain had a name. And maybe that's part of it, being able to give the pain, that constant feeling of discomfort and sadness, a name. And once you give it a name... It changes everything. It's a long mm-hmm. journey. It's not overnight. That's just the beginning of the journey. And mm-hmm. it may go on for years before you finally uh, get an understanding of what really happened and how it's, like you said, how it's impacted your life. And you had no idea what was going on. You had no idea of why you were doing the things that you were doing. It seemed, quote, unquote, normal to you. Mm-hmm. Even though you it was disruptive. It felt normal. And that's the part that people have such a hard time with because it has become been normal for them. Pain and a way of life that is destructive has become normal. And to get them past that, my goodness, what an awesome opportunity they have if they hear you talk, you know, tell your story or read your story. It may be that impetus that helps them break loose. Uh-huh. And start moving forward on a very, very long journey. Yes, for sure. So, Delisa, how can people get your book? So, my book is on Amazon. Um, it's uh, ebook and in print on Amazon, and it's on my website, um, bit. dot ly backslash. It's all in me too. Um, so again, you can just search It's All In Me 
Um, and the book is actually in my maiden name, um, Minister Jaleesa Ray. Um, I just got married in August, and I wrote the book before I got married. So um, it's written by Minister Jaleesa Ray, and you can just search on Amazon or even on Google. It's All in Me by Minister Jaleesa Ray, and it'll pop up. Okay. Okay. I so also see that you have a book signing or a book launch. Coming up? Um, February 8th? So that actually has gotten canceled. Um, okay. I'm actually about to launch something else in mm-hmm. its stead, but I will um, talk more about that at a later date. Okay. 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 Now, I also see that you are uh, a speaker and a spiritual transformation life coach. So if people wanted to uh, receive your services, how would they contact you? They can contact me by phone. My business phone number is 240-343-4177 or by email at Minister Jaleesa at JaleesaRay dot com. Okay. Okay. And congratulations on getting married. Thank oh, you yeah. so much. That's thank another you, turning you. point in life. Yes, ma'am. It'll be six months next month. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so you are surely a newlywed. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, but um, I am just sitting here just thinking about the title of your book uh, and what the words, as you talked about what you went through, the title of your book is so appropriate. You know, before we had this conversation, I didn't know what that meant. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's sort of one of those things that you really have to open up the book to really understand what you're talking about. I like the title, but I was like, in my mind, I was thinking, I mm, wonder what that what that means. So I'm mm-hmm. glad that you're here to share this with not only our listening audience, but also with us. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, I really appreciate, you know, the way you spoke about the opening title of the of the book title. It's all in me because I think that's something that most of us are not, we're never told. We're never told that everything that you need, you were born with. Mm -hmm. Um, As one person said, the whole nine months that you were in your mother's womb, you had everything that you need. Why would it be that all of a sudden you're born and you you have nothing? Mm -hmm. So everything that you are you have had since the moment of conception. It's our job in this world to bring that out. And often, just as you your story shows, people yeah, and I like the way you put jump that. in and cut it off. And you're just lost for years trying to find out who am I? What's in mm-hmm. me that's of value that I was born with? Yep. I was born worthwhile. I was born worthy. What happened? Mm-hmm. So that's a powerful uh powerful title. I like it a lot. Yeah, and I like the way you put that roof, the scenario about being in your mama's womb, you have everything you need. Mm-hmm. In that one space. And then when you come outside of that space, why do you think something is different? Yeah. And people immediately tell you that there is something different. All of a sudden, there's a whole world of people who are telling you, don't, stop, no, or interjecting their issues into who Mm -hmm. you are. And Mm -hmm. you get lost. As a child, you get lost. You find out that, oh, my goodness, I don't know. Okay, I don't know who I am. And you know what? I better listen to these people because they're the ones that are putting food in my mouth and a roof over my head. Mm-hmm. You know, so we we come into this space like from total freedom in your mother's womb to a place of a lack of freedom. 
Yeah. And we try to figure out how to get free again, and we make a lot of long, wrong turns and twists down the road. Until, like you yeah. said, you know, God's loving kindness grabs hold of us, and we grab hold yeah. of it, and we hold on. We just hold on and let Him take us on that journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I recently realized was that what you just talked about is that we we learn fear. It's yes. not something that we we are like born with. We're taught fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the opposite for me, the opposite of fear is love. That's not something yes. that we have to be taught. That's something that we're born with, that's something that's ingrained in us. Mm-hmm. So when we give back to love, we give back to love in ourselves, we give back to love in yeah. others, we give back to love in God, like everything literally will fall in line. And the other thing that you mentioned is that, you know, when it comes to your purpose and for business owners or for people in general, when it comes to your brand, your purpose and your brand is you. Yes. It's not what you do, it's who you are. Uh-huh. Yes. That is and that's so, what's so true. hard for people to get to. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're so right. Mm-hmm. So right. That's powerful. Thank you for putting that, that out there. Yes, that is very, many very people, powerful. Many people think that it's what they do. This is, mm-hmm. oh, it's what I do. No, no, no. It's who you are. But that's mm-hmm. just the problem. Most people don't know who they are. Yeah, and that's because they don't seek within themselves for it. They go outside. They say, exactly. oh, I need another degree, or I need to connect to this person, or I need, you know, this house. I need this mm-hmm. amount of money. I need right. this this job. I need this position in order to mm-hmm. find my purpose. When all you have to do, like, it's, it's so important to sit with yourself and listen. Mm. And not, yes. not, not. Scrolling through social media, not watching TV, not talking to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Not on a webinar. Yeah, that's so true. And I call that, you know, stepping outside yourself and looking, mm-hmm. you know, because that's to me that's real important. And that's yeah. something that I have uh, incorporated in my life. Uh, and now I just do it. Because it helps me to see me. Because everywhere I go, there I am. So I've got to make sure that I stay in touch yeah. with mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. it, it, it's really as much as the world is going and spinning out of control, the one thing that remains is prayer and meditation. Getting to know the God of your understanding, really listening, and then really listening. Not just hearing, because lots of people go around and they hear all kinds of things. We hear all kinds of things. But do we listen? You know, we can talk about, you know, all kinds of things. But someone gave a really good example. A young boy is outside playing. And his mother says, Johnny, come in here. And he just says, "Uh huh, okay, well, whatever." And he keeps right on doing what he's doing. But when she comes out the next time and says, "Johnny, get in here now," and all of a sudden he is running to get inside. The mm-hmm. first time he heard his mother, the second time he listened. There's a huge yeah. difference. Wow! Because he saw some kind of these uh, consequences coming. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have to learn how to listen. Listening is so important. Yeah. Which is one of the things that we love about what we do, Ida and I, this show, is that it gives people a chance to hear, but also gives them the opportunity to listen. Because everybody needs something different. You know, yeah. those who are going to hear your portion are going to, some are going to hear it, but others are going to listen Mm-hmm. And it's going to start them on their journey, maybe for the first time. Absolutely. There's, there's a big difference. Absolutely. And we mm-hmm. thank you so much, Lisa, for yes. sharing. Cause yes, this, indeed. This is so important. And one of the things that Ruth and I love about Just Minding My Business is that we get so many different voices from different walks of life around the country. And, you know... Everybody is touched 
in some way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So we truly thank you. So before we wrap up, please give us uh, your information again so that our listeners can connect with you. Okay, so I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Facebook. You can find me at Stand Out Spiritually. Um, my personal Facebook page is Minister Jalisa Hardy. Um Again, my business phone number is 240-313-4177. And my email address is ministerjalisa at jalisaray.com. Okay. Well, as you say, all glory to God. All glory to God for this conversation. Thank you, Jalisa. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank Thank you you so so much. much for having me. It was truly a blessing and I just continue to pray that people are touched by my story, that people, you know, are are able to start their journey to uh freedom and living abundantly and that they reach within themselves for the answers. I think that's the most important thing for them to, to know and understand that they have the answers, that they have everything that they need within them in order to start their journey or continue their journey to freedom and living abundantly. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, and thank you again for having me. This show is brought to you by the amazing women of a Sister Circle Empowerment Network, a Sin LLC, where we are never in competition, but always in collaboration, and our valued sponsors, Learn more about our sponsors and their services and membership in a sister circle, a SIN LLC, at www.assistacircle.org. To learn about becoming a sponsor for Just Minding My Business Radio and how our marketing package benefits your company, please visit our website at www.assistacircle.org. Voiceovers by RCH VoiceWorks. Contact slvoiceworks8201 at yahoo.com or call 443-620-4115. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.